people are going to think you're really good at bioinformatics and they're going to be super jealous of you. Alright, if your analysis is an R with Surat, you really only have to do three simple steps. So I went ahead and just ran the standard ScanP workflow on some lung data. I'm not going to go over this. I have another video that does if you don't know how to do this. Um, just one important point is I used the Leyden algorithm to label clusters. These are the modules we're going to be using, pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Let's go ahead and just plot the 2D UMAP. But of course this is 2D, so let's just take the same umap function, but pass in components equal to 3. So the first thing we need to do is find a color map. So let's just go over to the matplotlib website and we can pick one. So I'm just picking tab 20 here. Okay, so we can use matplotlib to grab that color map. Plot.cm, tab 20. You see it returns the color map. But if we pass range and then 0 to 15, or 0 to 14 actually, you see it returns a list of 14 different colors in this numerical format. So we're just going to zip this into a dictionary so that when we pass a cluster label, we can get a color in return. All right, so if we do color one, for example, we just get a color. All right, next, let's get the UMAP values from the A data object. We're just pulling it out, and you see that it's just an array with X, Y, and Z values for each cell. Let me just show you what you would do if you were using Surat here. Again, we just see that UMAP is the same three by however 10,000 cells, just X, Y, and Z again. But of course, we're going to stick to using the ScanP object here. So I'm just going to run this. Let's go ahead and make the simple 3D plot. All right, so we're just initializing the figure, adding a subplot and saying that it's a 3D projection. And then we're passing the three columns of UMAP, X, Y, and Z, to scatter. And you see, we haven't specified color yet, so it's just blue. So let's do that now. So we're just grabbing the laden column from it, the adata.obs object. And it's by default a string, so we're just converting it to an integer so that we can map it to our color dictionary that we made. All right, so now we have these different colors. These axes aren't great when we're rotating it, so what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of this X, Y, and Z axis, and then add some vertical and horizontal lines through the middle. Okay, but first, since the UMAP is not necessarily centered at the 0, 0 axis. I'm just taking the average of each dimension. In this case, I'm just showing X so far. So I'm taking the max value in the X direction and the minimum value in the X direction, and I'm just getting the average, or in this case, the center. So I'm just going to do this for Y and Z as well. All right, now that I have the centers, I'm going to plot three separate lines. All right, so I'm just plotting one line so far, and I'm telling it where on the x-axis it starts and where does it end, and then the same for y. So they're not changing, but in this case, I'm changing z. So I'm starting from the lowest z value, minus 2, just so that it sticks outside, and then to the highest z value, plus 2. And I'm just making it black, which is k, and then I'm just adding a line width to it. Now I'm just going to do this for x and y. All right, let's see how this looks. 
And there we have it. So we plotted these three lines through the center and we got rid of the axes. All right, now to make it spin, we're gonna use this ax.view and we're gonna keep one angle constant at 20 and then we're gonna spin it at i degrees. And since there's 360 degrees in a circle, we're gonna spin it 360 degrees in a loop. So we're just gonna do a for i in range, zero to 360. And then we're not gonna do every single degree. We're gonna skip by two at a time. All right, now we see that this is just running multiple times or 180 different times, but let's just stop it. So what we're going to do is save each image to a directory. So let's just make that directory right now. And then we're going to use the plot save function. All right, so we're just saving every figure as a number based on the angle it's at into the figs directory. So let's just run this. So we're going to be using image magic to combine the images. You can install it through Conda or there's other ways you can install it too if you don't have a Conda environment. All right, once that's done running, it might take a minute or two. We're just going to call the image magic command directly from the Jupyter Notebook, but depending on how your system's set up, you might have to do it differently than this. So we're just going to do convert and then add a delay of five. You can change this to make the animation faster or slower. And then we're just going to point to that directory we just made, all the files that are ending in PNG. And we're going to call it umap.gif. So this should only take about 30 seconds. And there we go. We have this beautiful spinning umap. People are going to think you're really good at bioinformatics, even though we didn't really do anything that fancy. Everyone's going to think you're super cool and they're going to be super jealous of you. Scientifically, maybe this really isn't that much different than a 2D U map, but it's a whole lot cooler. You know, if you're a PhD student and you put this up in a presentation, they're basically just going to give you a PhD on the spot. Um, if you're an assistant professor, maybe you'll get tenure 